Okay. For those that are attending live, uh, please interact with the chat. I'll be monitoring that throughout the course of the presentation. Um, try to answer some questions during the chat, but there definitely will be times at the end. And for those that are live, you can see um, if you have information that are more specific to Weave, who's running this webinar, you have a button at the top of your screen that shows to get a live demo. And then you can talk about some of the features that may be mentioned. Um, let's see. All right, it's about two after the hour. We'll go ahead and get started. Hi, I'm Ryan White. I am a senior marketing manager for Weave, and I'm here to talk a little bit about how to run a more eco-friendly office. This is actually a really fun topic because this is something that you're seeing transition in the market just over decades, and it's really starting to gain some steam over these last, I would say, about five years. And people are being more cognizant of it. And also the benefits of running a more eco-friendly office are really starting to be very tangible and really something that everyone can latch on to. So today, throughout the course of this webinar, I'm going to talk a little bit about the tips for the office and specifically getting that team and office buy-in. That's one of the biggest battles that will you will have to fight in that campaign you will have to run in order to successfully uh, become a more eco-friendly office. And then we're going to go over a few practical tips uh, depending on your office and what it looks like. And then obviously there's some more uh, larger big process changes that we will talk about and then making and maintaining big strides. So let's talk about influencing change and choice. So as I mentioned, getting the office buy-in, getting your team buy-in is one of the most important parts of running an eco-friendly practice and running our eco-friendly office. Everyone in the team has to be involved, has to be aware, and has to really put forth that effort. And so with team communication, there's a lot of things that are very important. Now, um, and when you talk about the psychology of communication, there's really only two ways that you're going to influence people to make a choice or influences people be people's behavior. And specifically for this, influencing your team's behavior. You can manipulate them, uh, which is essentially trying to take away their choice. This can be done through guilt and other various manipulative tactics where you seem like you're trying to take away their choice. So they have to choose that decision or the my favorite. How do you sleep at night? Or you can inspire people. And for our uh, conversation, I'm going to talk all about how do you inspire people? How do you inspire your team to change? because that is one of the more important tactics. And I think it's one of the more positive tactics, because if you do use manipulative tactics to try to influence your team's behavior, potentially have punishments or try to influence them or guilt them into this behavior, you're going to see results in terms of their behavior will change, but it won't always be long-term. A lot of times it's short-term and it does foster and create uh, problems that are actually going to come out in different ways. And so instead, we want to figure out how do you communicate? How do you get that team buy-in? How do you inspire your team so that everyone is on the same page? Everyone has that same goal to become more eco-friendly and everyone is proactively uh, choosing it. So let's talk about inspiring your team. Uh, we are a communications platform. So communication is something we're always talking about and we're always thinking about. We work with the industry leaders throughout um, you know, the medical, dental, home industries, et cetera. And that is one of the biggest challenges of running a practice is running people and working with people and inspiring people to be effective, inspiring people to do the right choices, to think proactively. Now, when it comes to uh, eco-friendly offices, it's really awareness is the biggest obstacle to overcome. Having people be aware of the influence that they can have and also the choices that they're making and they can be pro eco or, or be detract from me having an eco friendly office. So awareness is one of the biggest key areas in which you try to build and start. And then from there you build on that education found point talking about let's measure and see how many times we're, you know, eating out this week or let's measure how many times we have left the light on, et cetera. You're starting to measure and you're starting to actually be more aware of your footprint and then you can start the education process of like, what can we do to continually uh, move this forward? So with the inspiring theme, you want to try to uh, create that awareness. You want to try to foster it and then develop areas of education, opportunities to educate and show people a better way. And that goes to the next point. You want to lead by example. You want to be the one that is the cheerleader, the showcasing of 
this is what we want. Let me show you some ideas here. Please come along, you know, get on this train with me because this is going to be more sustainable. And that gets to the last part or the second one is the, or third one. You need to talk about the why. You need to sell the why is what we always talk about in marketing, but essentially you are trying to change people's behavior. And if you don't ever educate them why it's important, it's not going to last. But if you can understand what is that motivates your team, what is that motivates individual members and really sell on the why this is important, that's when you're going to see that lasting change and that buy-in. And the great thing about becoming eco-friendly is there are a lot of great whys. And a lot of great whys to push out, whether they're economically driven, you know, sustainability driven, or even just eco-friendly uh, health of the planet driven. So there's a lot of great whys, and it's just diagnosing which of those is going to help influence the behavior of my team the best. And lastly, this is, but probably the most important is you need to continually recognize and reward when people are doing things in a positive manner. One thing to try to bring awareness and education, lead by example, try to continuously find that motivation for them. And when they actually are uh, exhibiting behavior that is very pro-eco-friendly, that is you need to recognize it. You need to reward it. People respond so well to positive reinforcement. They respond to negative reinforcement too, but that goes back to the uh, that manipulative tactics. We want to inspire people because we're looking for a long-term growth change. And a lot of that is mindset. A lot of it is uh, your team based and how do you work together? And it does start at the top and the person that wants to take the charge and lead this campaign. So let's talk about some practical tips. Now, here's where it gets a little fun because every office is going to be different. Every office layout is going to be different. You have offices in San Francisco, New York that have very different from you know, more of the rural offices uh, that you see in Texas or other areas where just the square footage of the office, the access to natural light is going to be very uniquely different to your office. But there are some practical tips that we can uh, imply. And if you have that capability to imply them, if you own the land or if you have um, the ability to make changes to your building, here are some things to think about. One is smart thermostat. As uh, companies have become smarter and smarter with controlling and regulating temperature, both heating and cooling, they're realizing that there are some ranges in which an office can run comfortably that actually uh, maximize and optimizes the power outage and so that you're not over or optage, so you're not overusing at certain times. And it's a lot of people do this in their homes, but they're recognizing in businesses they can utilize the same tactic and save a lot of energy. And la naturally with that, you're also going to find out ways to how do you continue to keep a comfortable environment, but utilize a little bit less energy when it comes to lighting or when it comes to AC. And that is utilizing natural light as often as, can, as you can and fans. Now, implementing window, you know, use utilizing your space so that window and natural light is continuously a part of it. Uh, part of how you light the whole room and not adding excess lights on top of it when it's not needed is going to really start changing the way that you your office's energy bill goes down, which ultimately goes into the stream of how eco-friendly you are as an office is how much output you have energy-wise. Uh, with that same line, you have light timers and low flow fixtures. And so everything from being able to have dimmers in your lights, which is very important because a lot of times you'll notice that because you have more natural light coming in, having the dimmer off capability where you just need a little bit more light, just a little bit more warmth to be created in the room, but you don't need that full output of light. Uh, so, and also with that timer so that you can set those times, those times in which the lights are going to turn on and off is going to be very important. And all just those small incremental changes that are going to have a big impact in the end. And then let's talk about indoor plants. Uh, this is a fun one because this is also a decorative one. It's awfully promoting sustainability as well as it has a very wonderful in, you know, interior decorating motive to it. And so sustaining and keeping those plants and also aesthetic look of those is one of the things that any office can uh, import. So here's a fun one. So in depending on your industry, you might have a lot of aerosol products. And that's been a big push in several industries. I work in the dental industry very often. And there's been a big push by the ADA to actually try to get rid of a lot of aerosol products that have been shown to give harm to the environment. And so trying to eliminate where you can aerosol products. Now, there's some products that you're going to have to work with that are cleaning products that are just more regulated in your industry. But being, is there an excess use of these or can we replace it with more natural products? Uh, likewise, this is an easy one, water saving toilets. Now, this is dependent on how much capability you have to make changes to your office, but implementing toilets that actually 
use less water and conserve a lot more um, is just one of those small, simple steps. And then biodegradable cups and reusable containers, the more often that you're using these biodegradable cups and or always continuously bringing in, if everyone in the team brings in their own containers, their own water bottles and everything that you're, you're kind of eliminating the need of constant consumption of plastic, this is going to go a long way. And then print double-sided. This is a pretty simple one, but it's a hard one to implement because you can change your printer settings so they're constantly always printing double setting. It does. It is a little bit different and a, 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 I would say a step into a change into many offices don't usually use the, or utilize this technique, but it dramatically does save on paper. So if you notice all these practical tips are small changes. One of my favorite stories is the story of the Grape Britain cycling team, which essentially they had had a terrible string of luck of not being able to get to the Tour de France and some other areas. And they tried and tried and finally they brought in a new coach and the new coach's mentality was 1%. And the idea was if we can change every aspect of cycling that you can think about, just become 1% better at that, the dividends and the growth overall is going to make a big impact. And so a lot of these changes seem very small, but what it is, as you make continual small changes, you're making small 1% change better here, 1% change better there, you're going to start seeing that those compound and those make a big difference as you sum them all up. And so these are things may seem like small changes, but they can make a different difference. And fortunately, none of these really impact the way your process or your offices run. It doesn't really impact processes. That being said, we talked about print double-sided. Let's talk about some of these changes that are actually more of a process change. And that's where it does change the way your office run. And it does change the way you do things on a regular basis. And as you have some availability to do some of these new processes, these are going to pay big dividends in how much, how eco-friendly you are and the impact you are having on the environment. And those are two big ones are digital forms and digital payments. Let's talk a little bit about digital forms first. So this is something that you're seeing in every industry and medical is starting to really push towards getting away from the paper form. I still go into offices and it's, you know, part of the practice where the first thing that happens is you walk into the office, they greet you, say hello, and then they hand you a clipboard with a piece of paper. That is very common. It's been something that's been done for gener you know, for, you know, 40, 50 years, but we're starting to get to the point where that is becoming outdated. That, patients' preferences and expectations are starting to move more toward the shift of, I can do this paperwork at the convenience of my home. I can do it from my computer. I can even do it from my smartphone. And offices that are starting utilizing digital forms, whether it be new patient forms, or they have a kiosk mode when people come into the office, they aren't writing on paper. They just have a little iPod and uh, iPad in the kiosk mode where they're able to fill out their patient information and sign in um, and pre-appointment links. These are eliminating excessive use of paper, but it also has a lot of more benefits and we'll get to the why in a minute. So start thinking of, is there, are there forms that I use on a regular basis that I can digitize, that I can make that a little bit more of a process of implementing with our practice management system or our systems of record and getting these forms and that information to there in an easier, more efficient way and saving on paper. Um, so there's wellness forms, there's consent forms, there's new patient forms, there's, you know, if you're in the dental industry, there's smile surveys, if you're in, there's all sorts of different forms and start thinking and trying to have this idea of, can I make a change in the way that we do things that is going to utilize technology to not only make us more efficient, but it's going to have an impact on, you know, for sustainability. And so let's talk about the why of digital forms. This is where it gets fun. Digital forms have been shown that they save a lot of time and they save paper and they save money. So when it comes to time, you know, we're looking at average of three hours plus a week, depending on how much you use forms. And not only does it save you time in the office where you're taking a look and they fill out, you know, the paper form and then you have to go in and try to decipher their handwriting sometimes, you know, make guesses at what they wrote. And you're just basically manually inputting that information from the paper into the computer. But with digital forms, what you're seeing is a lot easier implementation, whether you have a full integration with your digital form system that just automatically integrates that system into the system of record, or being able to quickly copy and paste fields and move them over. This is going to save you time. And more importantly, it also saves the patient time. Now, one of my favorite benefits on digital forms is 
the way that patients' preferences are changing is for these smaller industries, for your medical office, for your opto office, for your chiropractic, for your vet, et cetera, patients want time with the doctor. Patients want time with the staff. And what they're seeing is if they go in and immediately the first interaction is just, you know, them by themselves filling out forms versus if they are able to do a digital form and they come in and they're actually having conversations with the office staff and asking questions and going back and forth, you're creating that relationship. You're creating that relationship of between the office and the patient and trust within the office itself. And you're creating something that is going to make the patient more loyal and uh, more accept or more receiving of patient treatment, you're building that. And part of that key is just creating time for face-to-face, creating time for that in person. They've already taken time out of their day to come here. So utilizing that time, not on homework of filling out paperwork, but now utilizing it to actually have those conversations and have the really get to the purpose of why they're there. Um, so that's my favorite benefit. But if you are motively, you know, if you're motivated by actually make money savings and revenue and bottom line, it does show that, you know, when you eliminate paper forms, you save up to 3% of annual revenue and, or annual revenue. And that's in the medical industry as a whole. And so what you're looking at with changing some of these processes is it's going to benefit your office in a myriad of ways, but it's also one of those areas you can really get everyone on board because you are now creating more of a eco-sustainable office. You're eliminating your uses, excessive use of paper when it's not needed, and you're also becoming more efficient and optimizing your processes. It is a big change, and it does take a lot of buy-in to it, but you'll see that there is a lot of benefits and there's a lot of why too. Now it comes to digital bill payments and billing. This is a very interesting one because many times the medical industry starts to push the trends and then other times they're behind the trends of other industries. And this is where migrating to a billing process that is a digital, a digital billing process is something that the medical industry is lagging a little bit behind everyone else. Being able, and a lot of that has to do with their working with insurances and insurances companies are still in the very much paper bill form, sending the bills out by mail and the slow mail. But Medical offices and dental offices, you know, vet offices that are starting to see that they can actually send digital invoices and that they can, you know, utilize these digital ways of collecting payments. Um, and it even goes down to the very simple of not having to, you know, print out receipts. These are all ways that patients are actually becoming to expect and often to interact with an office. And more importantly, it's also saving on your bottom line. And it's um, creating a more eco-sustainable practice. So a couple of ways that you can do this is migrating to that digital billing process. How often are you sending out bills by paper versus how often are you trying to collect by paper and sending your notices of payment or overdue, et cetera? Can you change that mindset? Can we do this digitally? Can we do it by email? Can we do it by text? Can we actually collect payments by text? And there are a lot of companies that provide software that you can text out links in which the patient can, or the client can interact with that link, make a payment, full or even partial payments, and then you can just have reminder payments over and over through that. And no longer are you sending out bills and hoping that they don't throw it away. You can actually text and interact and people open their text messages. So you're much more likely to actually collect from it as well as email receipts instead of printout. So the why to this is, you know, going to be very similar to digital forms. There's less paperwork. Uh, paperwork is slow and it's tedious and you're just sending out bills and hoping that they're pay. And then you maybe are sending out late and, you know, uh, you know uh, payment notices, et cetera. But with text messages and with email, you can get to people directly. And it's a lot easier to send that. It's taking less resources to do so. And what they see with digital payments is you're collecting payments a lot faster. And who does not want to be paid in full quicker? I don't think I can ask. I don't think I could have ever, ever asked that question and had one person raise their hand and be like, I'm actually fine with, you know, having a two, three month delay and being paid. So actually, I have asked that question. And one of the uh, office managers I've worked with named Valerie Caulfield talked about with text to pay, being able to send out links by text that 80% of her payments are collected on the same day of sending out that text. That is unheard of. She was saying in her industry, she came from, she's been in the industry for 30 years and she talks about, you know, all the changes that she's seen throughout her time. And one of the biggest changes she has seen is just these last couple of years of patients interacting with digital payments 
and how easy and makes your job so much easier and how great it is to collect, you know, majority of your payments from patients the same day that they're, you know, at appointment. And then one of the other doctors I worked with, Dr. Gupta, he talked about how he loved the transition from digital payments, from old paper billing to digital billing, because paper billing is so inefficient. It takes, you know, 30 to 60 days plus uh, you're using paper. It's just, you know, saying it out and hoping they interact, but text to pay and having digital payment processes take, you know, a 210 minute process per patient to a five second process. It's no longer, you know, printing out all the records, making sure all the every, you know, everything's ready to go and uh, send out and even driving to the mailbox or, you know, having the stamps. Now you are doing it all within the power of your computer or your phone. So those are two big process changes that are going to be pushing sustainability and eco-friendly practices in your office. Okay, returning back to making those changes. Uh, I told that story about the British cycling team that brought in the coach where they hadn't won an Olympic medal or a Tour de France medal in almost like 100 years. The coach focused on 1%, making 1% changes in any way you can. Can you make a 1% change in this office in when it comes to your use of paper? Can you make a 1% change when it comes to um, your lights and your natural power outage? And what they noticed is as they made those 1% changes and really focused on the practice, um, they had huge dividends. And then finally, they broke that streak of the uh, British cycling team was able to get some gold medals and win some Tour de France's. And it all comes down to just small incremental changes. So we need to maintain a healthy mindset when we're trying to push this campaign forward because any progress is progress. A lot of us get caught in that trap of it's either all or nothing. We're all eco-friendly. Everything is so you know eco-friendly. Every process is optimized, et cetera or I'm not making any difference. And that's a very dangerous mindset to be either you're 100% all in or you are, <laughs> you've made no difference all whatsoever and it's hopeless. You have to be able to see that any progress is progress. And any small change that your office makes, you know, it doesn't matter how long it takes to make that change, is a good and positive thing. And also being open to ideas, trying them out and potentially it doesn't work with your office. Maybe you see that you tried making this change to biodegradable cups or et cetera, and it's just not working out. That's okay. Be open to other ideas of change because it's all about how can you continuously push and create a mindset where people are aware of being eco-friendly and they're aware of their behavior towards it. And that way, because they're aware of it, it's going to make a big difference. I love this little gif here because sometimes we think like the goal is all the way up here to have, you know, a net zero office and it just seems so far out of reach and you're just trying your best, but that ball is barely even getting close to the hoop. It's really about what are you doing? What effort are you putting into it? And if you're putting effort into it, that is progress. And remember, change takes time. So be patient. A lot of times you think you want to make these changes. You want to be able to measure them within like a short, as short as a day, a week, a month, et cetera. But a lot of these changes take time. So that is my, uh, I want to talk a little bit about maintaining an eco or creating and maintaining an eco-friendly office. And I hope you got a little bit of inspiration from this, but ultimately it comes down to, can you inspire your team? And can you make small incremental changes that are going to benefit the office financially and processes, um, but as well as have a positive impact on the eco. Okay. Thank you for attending. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat.